First it was hand sanitizer, then face masks, and now it's air purifiers. The new technology that could make indoors safer. Who would have thought scenes like this would ever feel foreign and somewhat frightening? Of the people who have caught COVID in the current Sydney outbreak, very few are known to have contracted it outdoors. So being able to kill the virus indoors is key to stopping the spread and letting us live more freely. This is a unit that you to suck in the air, this area. It's it devices like this process. that claim to um, help protect us when society air. opens up again. It decontaminates air, so we end up with you know, air that is 99.9999 clear of viruses. Virus killer, it's a big call. Australian consumers um, are now far more aware than they ever have been that air quality um, is a thing that can affect our health. So yes, I'm confident that it'll be a game changer. Alastair Stagg from rent kill Initial explains how it works. It's got a pre-filter, um, it's got a carbon filter and a HEPA filter. Um, that filtrated air then moves into the reactor chamber and this is where the viruses get killed. Uh, so the reactor chamber is full of UVC light which breaks down the virus and then at the top it produces purified and decontaminated air. If it's on this side of the office though and, it, and I transmit an airborne pathogen over there, will it catch it? Yes, um, the micro droplets that people expel, um, some will fall um, as they would do naturally. Um, but the good news is, is that the airflow this creates, um, it will keep circulating the air. So circulated air, fresher air, and therefore less risk of transmission of disease. Alastair says COVID has brought our attention to a global air quality crisis, made worse by the introduction of the highly infectious Delta strain. Um, yeah, we're 19 times more likely to contract a virus or a cold or a, a um, nasty, if you like, in an environment like this, you know, indoors, than we are externally. Rentakill Initial says it will be offering its device to businesses first, including aged care facilities, claiming the largest model will cost just over $10 a day. Retired scientist Professor Bruce Milthorpe is one of two experts hired by the company to review the research behind Virus Killer. Masks and sanitizer are not enough. Uh, they're necessary, so you should still use them, very much so. But you also need to make sure that the spaces you go into have clean air. And that's the real potential game changer uh, that Delta's dealt us and that we need to come back to, how to clean our air up. So improving ventilation is fundamental to that layered protection that we will need uh, for probably many years into the future. Professor Jeff Hanmar is an architect. He will perform independent tests on the virus killer, but he's also examining a number of possible solutions to improve building ventilation, like this health box designed There's for smaller well spaces like residential homes. So this isn't like the other device, it's not killing any kind of virus, it's taking circulating air. It's taking fresh air in from outside and push it into the room, which would then dilute the air in the room what it would mean is that you would have more air in the room, the concentration of any pollutant would be reduced. So, so it would dilute coronavirus? Yeah, you dilute any airborne pathogen. As an infectious disease expert, Professor Bill Rawlinson remains cautious of any quick fix to kill the virus. We need to have proper tests with current strains, with SARS coronavirus 2, in order to show that anything that's, that's advertised as killing the virus not only kills it, but destroys it in a setting that's relevant to where it's being used. Professor Rawlinson says testing in a lab setting is very different to how we interact with the virus in the real world. The real risk for me is that people stick a filter in the corner and say, well, I'm doing all I can. And, and that's not a good thing because it, if it reduces all those proven things, uh, that reduced spread, then, then that's actually an adverse outcome. On top of QR codes, mask wearing and vaccination, there are calls for better ventilation to join the list of daily health advice. Already in Belgium, we've seen the government introduce requirements for CO2 levels in bars and restaurants 
And I think that type of direction is a sensible way to go. If the government's serious about making things safe as we, we reopen.